Righto, tell you the champs. Now in this video I'm going to try and sort of work out what the next gaming laptops will do in terms of performance. Basically by just limiting the wattage on the CPU and GPU with the next generation parts. Mostly we're talking about the GPU here because CPU is not really going to matter. And we're going to try and estimate what the performance will be like. And we'll see if we can get close to a verdict of how they're actually going to perform. And I think I did get there in the end. It's a lot of trial and error, a lot of testing. Now it's using the latest Intel 10th generation CPUs, which I'm going to limit the wattage of that to about 62 watts. Because in a gaming laptop, you're probably going to be somewhere between 45 and 60 watts. So that's the CPU taken care of. It's going to use a maximum of 62 watt. Now I'll just quickly go through the desktop. It has an MSI Mag motherboard, Intel version of course. Actually a really good motherboard. I mean it has stuff like 2.5 gig networking, which is not usual on an entry level. And I could pump 300 watts into this CPU and it does not buckle. The VRM does not buckle, so it does everything I want. It's actually the CPU that will buckle before the actual motherboard. Now with the GPU, I'm using the Zeus tough rtx 380 and this is one of the best rtx 380s you can get especially at the lower end i mean this is performing like a flagship and it's got features of a flagship yet well it's not total entry level it's like one level up but it's not a strix and the thing is super cool super quiet and has stuff like dual bios back in play hdmi 2.1 two of those it's just an amazing gpu so this is the way you want to go if you want a rtx 3080 now i was going to use gaming ram because that's the best that stuff but i want to use 3000 megahertz ram so i did that there's like 64 gigs it doesn't matter but i'm going to limit this rtx 3080 I'm actually going to try and limit it to about 100 or 110 watts now the reason i'm doing that is because a thin and light max q gaming laptop will use about 90 watts gpu around 45 to 60 watts cpu so we'll try that first but you've got to remember mobile parts are highly binned they also tune different even though they you know relatively the same parts as the desktop but but desktop components are you know tuned so that their efficiency is at the higher power range whereas mobile parts they try to get better performance per watt which they do probably through binning and also they try and tune them where their efficiency is at a lower you know end of the power scale there instead of being at the higher end so giving it a bit more wattage remember a mobile laptop is going to have better performance per watt it sort of should work out the same so that's my theory here as you can see there i'm using about 110 watts on the GPU and this is Firestrike of course. Now in Firestrike an RTX 2080 Super will probably do about 21,000, 22,000. So that's what we're sort of using as a benchmark. So as it turns out that's about 30% of the GPU power. That's roughly about you know 100 watts, 110 watts and CPU don't worry it's just limited to 62 watts. It can do whatever it does. So at 40% GPU power, so we're talking about 110 watts or just over, I've got a fire strike score of 16,824. That is well short of 22,000. So you can't go watt for watt here. Obviously there's going to have to be something done, some tuning. I'll get there in the end, I think. So I went through some other power curves and then I went to 50% power on the GPU. Now, 50% is not 10% more than 40% if you get the maths because 10% is actually a quarter of the whole of 40%. So it's really a 25% increase. So just notching it from 40 to 50% power on the GPU and Wolf. We're now using 150 watt, a bit more maybe, in between 140 and 160, somewhere around 150 sort of average there. But we're getting a fire strike score of now 24,000. Now that still doesn't make sense, right? You're doing 150 watts versus 90 watts and you're only ended up 200 points higher. So clearly the laptop parts are gonna have to be much better performance per watt and be tuned, you know, a bit different here. But remember I had reviewed that Gigabyte 17X. Now the good thing about that thing is it used a 200 watt GPU. And this is where I think we're gonna get close to the difference between the 3080s and the last generation 2080 laptops. So now I'm going to put 65% power into that GPU, which equals just over 200 watts. Now, we've just talked about the mobile part should be better performance per watt, but it's very close between 200, it's just over 200 watts. And here we can clearly see the difference. At 65% power, 
I'm now getting a five strike score of 37,500. Now at 200 watts power on that 17X with the RTX 2080 Super, I was getting 28,000. So it's nearly 10,000 difference. And I think this is gonna be more the performance difference when you come to comparing the same sort of laptops, 2080 versus 3080 or, you know, 2070 versus 3070. That's probably going to be the difference there. You know, it was a bit of a fail at the start doing the same wattage, but if we're using 200 watts GPU, same as that 17X laptop, we're getting nearly 10,000 points increase. And that's what I would expect. I do think the next generation laptops are going to be bottlenecked with the CPU at 1080p. So I don't think the gains are going to be what we're seeing on the desktop. As Usa said, they're going to make actually um, 1440p laptops. So I can't wait for that. We've got to get off 1080p because we're getting a serious bottleneck now. And as I've tested this 3080 at 1080p, like seriously, the difference at 1080p versus the last generation is like stuff all. So 200 watts, we can see there clearly 10,000 point difference. That's probably where we're going to end up, maybe. If you have any ideas on, or do you want me to do any testing on sort of wattage, what I should do, balance it, I'm all up for some suggestions down there. But um, yeah, that is what it is. That's my testing. Anyway, catch you next one, guys. Tally ho.